Good morning, Canada. We are live from the Skills Canada National Competition in Moncton, New Brunswick, SNNC in 2016 in, in New Brunswick. Welcome to our panelists. My name is Gillian Mason. I'm president of ABC Life Literacy Canada. And I also have the privilege of leading a social enterprise around adult education and, ed and essential skills in the workplace. And I am joined with a celebrity panel here today. And you're going to enjoy our conversation, I believe. Let me introduce each. On the far, your far right, is Kate Campbell from HGTV's Decked Out. In the middle, Paul Lafrance, also from HGTV Canada's Decked Out, Disaster Decks, and Home to Win. And, and Lynn Peltier, we'll come back to that. And Lynn Peltier, Master Chef of Canada Runner-Up, and also Master of Many Other Trades. So you have in front of you today some very skilled folk who are with me today to talk about the nine essential skills, focusing on one in particular, which essential skills here at the competition and, and Moncton are there, we're focusing on, which is communication. But first of all, what I'd like to know from each of you, starting with Kate, is why did you enter the trades in the first place? What brought you to the oh, trades? Oh, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to hear that story, Kate. We begin. Take um, it away. It was a long and winding road that led me into the trades. I never in high school knew that I wanted to pick up a skilled trade as a career. I was always kind of geared and pushed towards university. And I, I kind of followed that path, but I was lost because I really didn't know what I wanted to take in university. I didn't want to waste the time if I didn't know. So I went to my guidance counselor, and unfortunately, but fortunately, I was graduating with a 93% academic average. And as soon as your transcript's out, it's like, okay, well, what university are you going to instead of what career would bring passion into your life? And it, it wasn't, it was a one-way conversation, and it, there was never an option to kind of look at other career paths. Yeah. So I felt really lost coming out of high school because all I knew was I didn't want to sit behind a desk. I'm extremely active and I, I love creativity, I love problem solving, and I really just didn't know what I could take in university to lead me to where I wanted to be in my life. So it was actually my mom that found eventually a newspaper article with a woman in skilled trades course uh, in Ontario. And this, this program, it's 20 women, it's a, a government sponsored program, and it's a safe environment for women to go and learn and not feel intimidated, picking up tools, studying code, framing, um, plumbing, electrical. So it's kind of just like a, a big pot of skilled trades that you can kind of try out. And as soon as I picked up a, a skill saw, as, a, as soon as I built something tangible, I knew that I had found something that I was passionate about. But it took a long time to actually figure that out. That's a wonderful story. I'm sure that resonates with an awful lot of people who are watching, and I'm sure a lot of women mm -hmm. uh, will be inspired by your story. Which brings me to Lynn. How did you end <laughs> up um, in the skilled trades? And you've been a master so, which, of which several which trades. Which skilled <laughs> trade? Um, Sorry, one of my hairs is on you. <laughs> Apologies. You, you wish, but anyways, um, uh, I wasn't, I started at 11, I was in the Air Cadets. Uh, how many oh. girls go in the Air Cadets? So I had actually my glider license before I had my car license. Your glider license? My glider before, pilot license glider before pilot. I had my driver's license. Uh, I was the first female band major in Canada, like that's someone oh, with a big stick. Really? Oh, no, 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 no. So after you're a certain age, you can't be in the cadets anymore. You have to go in the reserves. Uh -huh. But way back then, women were not, you women know, were not allowed in the, in the reserves, reserves, especially in, in reserves. infantry. Uh -huh. So there was this uh, federal program, uh, and it was called FSYEP that I applied for. And it was for the militia, the reserves in Gagetown, and they had chosen 20 men. But they put two girls on standby. Well, unfortunately for me, two guys did not pass their physical. So they had no choice but to take <laughs> us, right? So after we did that program, the lieutenant goes, Lynn, he goes, why don't you go take, uh, join the military? He says, you won't have to pay for your college. You can choose whatever trade you want, because wow. he did testing. And so I decided to go in a non-traditional female trade, which was communications and electronics. Okay. So uh, my first trade was uh, the military. It was the military, and in both cases, the federal government programs 
that sort of made it seem possible, possible for, for both for, of for you. both of us. So we have that we have that in common. Yes, sure. absolutely. Well, now, Paul, my guess is that your entry into these skilled trades is a little different. So tell us a little bit about how it was that you came to be a skilled <laughs> tradesperson. <laughs> well, first, I don't know. If she's, she seems to think that I'm Paul LeBron. She doesn't. She doesn't realize that he's let. He's let me, Ron Burgundy, sit in his place here for a few minutes, which is very kind. So Ron, I can tell my sorry, short Ron, story. Thank you very much, thank for, you. Ron, for joining us. I, my mistake. I do appreciate you calling me by script. my by my real name, because as we all know, I'm I'm kind of a big deal. Rather. I I'm I'm well known throughout the world and other planets. When I was a boy, I wished that I could be a builder of some sort, but I didn't have the opportunities. I was I was. I was given a hammer once, and I was meant to build a doghouse with the hammer, and? And, then, and then the dog didn't make it. It's a long story. It's not a pretty story. I don't want the whole world to know about it, because I still feel terrible about that. So that's why I went into broadcasting, because I didn't have to use my mind. <laughs> Mr. Burgundy, that sounds like a very good idea. It was. I ended up, but now I'm here in Moncton, stay yes. classy, because I want to learn. I'm, I am rethinking my life. I am here now. Paul LaFrance and Cade Campbell but both convinced me that I, I would become a good tradesperson. And tell me what you are learning here on the floor at the Skills Canada National Competition. I am learning about 47 different trades. That's Who knew trades. that my brain could be such a sponge? Fabulous. I am, in, I, am, I am absolutely absorbing one skill after the other after the other like Neo in the Matrix. It is unbelievable. Fantastic. Fantastic. And everything is here. Which ones in particular are popping up for you? I like to weld things. You like to weld things. I like to weld things. I like to bake things. Bakers. Who would have thought Ooh. that that would be a part of a trade? Who says men can't bake? True. Very true. Can men bake? Absolutely. I will learn to bake oh, I will, and I weld. I will, and I want to lay bricks. 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 I want to Are you seeing that? I saw you, you do bricklaying this morning. You were atrociously good. <laughs> Thank you. They both did a wonderful job. The two ladies did a wonderful job of bricklaying this morning, and I believe you were there, Mr. Burke. I now, was. Now, Kate. I was, oh. I, I'm going to go get. Paul LeBron, he's just outside. Was oh, he just outside? He's, yes, and I, I, I need to thank him for this opportunity. He's, he will come he back. He is quite something, that man. He quite will come something. back. You will bring Paul back. He, uh, Paul will be back very shortly. Wonderful. But thank you for having me. And, and as per usual, I'm Ron Burgundy. Stay classy, <laughs> planet Earth. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Burgundy. Blessings on you all. So thank what, you. What they probably don't know is that we gave a presentation about the nine essential skills Indeed, yes. that Ron actually lacks. He doesn't have any of the skills, so it was a good example of why you need these skills within a workplace to function Fantastic. and Fantastic. not make a fool of yourself. <laughs> you can use another word, but we probably get beat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, Kate, tell me what you're learning while uh, we're waiting for Mr. LaFrance to join us on the skills competition floor. On the floor, what I'm, I'm just amazed at almost the participants' energy, yes. that's, that it's, it's really, the environment is so contagious. Yes. You walk around the floor and it, sometimes there's a stigma against the trades yeah. where it's kind of like that consolation prize and it's right. almost like, well, you couldn't get into university, so right. go take a trade. But here it's like first prize, like these people are so intelligent. They like thinking about the essential skills. They, they carry so many essential skills with them and they have a passion for what they're doing and I think right. that's the most important thing. So is the that passion is really something that you're seeing on the oh, skills competition Yeah, floor. and that, that's contagious. So yes. the, the kids will bring that back to wherever they live right. and come back with this sparkle in their eye and right. be able to talk about the competition and talk about their passion for what they're doing and then that kind of just ripples out like a, a small pebble in a, in a pond. In a pond, very nice, yeah. very nice. I mean, what are you seeing on the competition floor? What are you taking away from it? Uh, what I'm taking away from it is that unfortunately, and uh, I was talking to a gentleman about that, is um, when I was in high school, um, we used to have this class called Human Development and uh, where you had to carry an egg around for like nine weeks and uh, not break it and then they would teach you how to like make like crab dinner or whatever like women stuff like stay-at-home mom stuff and I didn't want to take that stuff I wanted to go in the shop class that was like the whatever class you had in high school grade 12 that you can do whatever I wanted to learn how to change a spare tire I wanted to learn how to you know change the oil in my car I wanted. Yeah. we weren't allowed to 
because we were girls. Because you were women. Okay. And what I'm seeing down there yes. is that there's just uh, the same amount of females Female. doing the same, the trades that 20 years ago nobody would have imagined a woman would be, would ever be doing. And it's not because they're not capable. It's just that. We weren't, we, were, we, do, we weren't allowed to do it, and we weren't encouraged to do it. So mm -hmm. you're seeing all that enthusiasm that uh, Kate was talking about Absolutely. among the women. Absolutely, and, and, and a trade now is yeah. not a consolation prize. It's uh, like right. most trade people are like right brain people. Like they're creative, right. so they're very tactile. They're like, um, they're like, they communicate very easily. They teamwork, like all the essential wow. skills. Like, a, and they like to make things, concrete things. So. And we're seeing that on the floor. It's it's amazing. I can't get over like what some of the kids are making or building or baking or cooking or like I'm I'm just in awe of these youth today. Like Isn't I'm that impressed. Marvelous? Isn't that yeah. marvelous? Well, I should say that we've got a live stream going on all the time on our station, so oh, that people cool. can actually see what's cool, going on. Cool. Yeah. Now I'd like to invite uh, Paula France, who's just joined us, and yes. thank you very much for joining us. Yes, it's good to see you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wonder if you could tell us why it is that you decided to join a skilled trade. Sure. Uh, well, first, I, I apologize for being late. Not at all, and not at all. You're under much amazing. demand on the floor. I, I can't understand. believe how similar my style is to Ron Burgundy. We were wearing almost the exact same thing. Who knew? Yeah. That's really <laughs> um, Not the same memo, I suppose. Yes, I mean, we, we, we did. He's, he's like a brother from another mother. So, um, my, my trip into the trades was a very unusual one. It was not something I ever expected. I was a, I was a guy in school with now I'm finding out many years later that my brain has been classified into that kind of ADHD category, ah. which is my greatest asset. When I when I when I found that out at about 35 <coughs> years old, yeah. I was told, you know, this 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 is not a dysfunctional brain you have. You just you have a fast moving mind. And he said, if you have to call it a disorder at all, it's more appropriate to call it IDD, not attention deficit disorder, but interest yeah. deficit yeah. disorder. Interest deficit disorder. Which means that if I'm not interested in something, the blood is actually physiologically not flowing in the front yeah. of the brain. But if I am interested in something, yes. I am razor Look sharp out. focused yep. and like usually going to be pretty good at what yep. I'm doing. Top of the game. So, you know, when I was in school, because this wasn't recognized, I was just, yeah. if, if I didn't, if my teachers weren't passionate about what they were teaching, they did not have my attention. And so, you know, eventually they kicked me out because, I, you know, I, I kept asking, I kept challenging them. I was like, why, why are we doing this the way you're doing it? I don't understand. I don't understand. And they didn't know how to deal with me. That so they gave me that, they kicked me out. And, um, and I went on a bit of a journey. And I, as a musician, first and foremost, again, you're talking about the creative side of things, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm also very left brain at the same time. I'm a very confused individual inside my brain. But I, I had to get a job. Because, you know, when, you're, when you grow up, you have to, and you have a, like a mortgage to pay for, and you yeah. get married, your wife is always like, you should probably work and pay money. So that's, uh, that's, unless you that's, get a sugar mama. It is a pattern. Yeah. It is a pattern. It is. It's a pattern <laughs> that, you know, that, that men have been following for generations. So, uh, so, I, so I, I was working at a bookstore, which was horrifying for me. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Can you imagine me working at a bookstore? No, those poor people. Those poor people. <laughs> I would go. I was literally at the point where I was going to buy, like, x lax to put in everybody's coffee just to break the monotony before my friend came up and said, I have a fence and deck company, would you like to come work for me? And I was wow. like, please, please, like anything. So when I first started, I, was, I didn't use a circular saw until I was 22 years old. And I started my company when I was 22 years old. Wow. That is now 20 years old. Wow. And it was literally began on that first day where I was actually building something with my hands. Number one, yeah. power tools. Like we're here represented, we're, we're here with uh, DeWalt Stanley Boston. Oh yes, yes. And you know, Best tool line, obviously, we, that's the only reason why we're with them, but they're so pretty. They look like Tonka trucks. <laughs> Any guy that does not admit that, that, that the, the tools look like toys, grown-up toys for boys. And, or girls. And, but I was going to say that, Kate. <laughs> I have four daughters. This is important for me. But it is a, you know, suddenly I was building something with my hands, right. seeing something right. tangible. Yeah. And then shortly after that, I, you know, I was getting bored just building the same fence every day. So, you know, being invited to build a deck one day yes. was like this mesmerizing moment where I was like, no, there must be so much more. The creativity, you know, I'm a very deep thinker and I'm yes. like looking at culture and going, everything is moving so fast, faster than yes. it's ever moved throughout human history. People are like developing stress related diseases right. to, to actually be able to build something in somebody's backyard space. That's a place of rest that they can actually go and like very commune. Satisfying. 
with the peaceful elements of nature, yes. that's powerful. That's not just about right. creativity, it's, it's got purpose behind it. Yeah. So that ended up moving me into, I, I've never considered myself to be in the trades. Right. I'm just doing what I love. Isn't that marvelous? So I would like each of you to sort of comment, because you've been walking around, you probably already had a number of conversations with some of the, competi uh, the competitors. When you're talking about essential skills, do they know what you're talking about? Do they understand that no matter who they are and what their strengths are, that some of these things are going to have to figure out, like communications, working with others, numeracy skills, measuring, all that kind of stuff? Or is it, how do, you, how do you sort of have that conversation in a way that doesn't put people off? Like, what it, inspires it, kids around it, the essential skills? What, what I noticed when I was walking around the co competition platform is yeah. that um, different, um, different trades have different skill levels. Right, that they need to do their to project, do their, whatever. Uh, their like, uh, okay, like a computer programmer yeah. might not have the best co communication skills right. or public speaking skills yes. because that's not the They're way his thing. or mine works. So they will have the mathematical skills, yes. they will have the other, the calculating skills, right. they will have those right. skills probably a little bit more elevated. They oh, all okay. do have the nine essential skills, yes. but depending on what trade you're talking to, right. it's not at the same level. Right. So that's right. what makes everybody an individual right. and why some people are attracted to different trades or careers. Right, right. and what about you, Kate? What do you think? Thank you. I almost feel like uh, Trades people, going back to that whole stereotype, you, you often think of them, you, the stereotype is, well, they're just kind of blah. You just go and you either, you're hammering away <laughs> or you're, but then when you break it down and what drew, drew me to the trades was that I had to communicate, I had to problem solve, I was thinking on my feet, I was using technology to design, yes, I, yeah. there were so many elements and I was using all of those skills every day without even Thinking, thinking about, about it, it. Yeah. yeah. She's right. the one that had like four academic scholarships to go the regular education route. Yeah. And she but it was more challenging. That. Right. It was more challenging for, and more exciting for her to do this. To yeah. do that, right. Yeah. And, it, and I'm wondering, did you find like, when people, when I'll, I'll talk about numeracy for instance, and people yeah. will say, oh, I don't remember my algebra. It's not so much about algebra, is it? It's no. more about sub or dividing, multiplying, you know, like, fractions and that kind of stuff. So it's well, not, or it, is it? It's, what have you found in your trades? Have you, how you use numerous I'll, I'll, I'll use, okay, like with sharpshooting. Yes. Uh, like, yeah, mathematics. It's sharp, sharp, sharpshooting. <laughs> it's kind of handy. Shooting. Well, you know, the velocity yes. times, okay. like the, yes. yeah, the yeah. velocity of your round and yes. the, the, the wind and the, yes. like, so you have all to calculate that yeah. that's all. That's awesome. That's all yeah, math. That's awesome. pretty cool. And Fun then in, in, <laughs> in cooking, if I want to bake right. two loaves of bread right. instead of one, then I'll use two and a half cups of flour times two which makes like four and a half, uh, four, five cups of flour. So you have to be right. able to, in different skills, you have to use. So you do use some of that stuff. What you do don't you necessarily or? use the train is leaving Windsor at 3, 4, 5 a.m. <laughs> and the other train is leaving Quebec. And what time does the elephant one, get on the back and of the train? Exactly. So we don't necessarily get to use that, but we do. And, and when you're measuring for decking and stuff like that, yeah. you have to measure, you have to like, so, it comes into every single trade. Right, right. Did you guys find that as well in terms of numeracy or, or in one of the, ni the nine essential skills? I, I tend to look at things on a bit of a kind of an overview <laughs> pers perspective where whether it's numeracy. <laughs> yes. Sorry, that's my, that's, uh, who put this tie here? What a horrible Jeez. tie. Jeez. I'll tell you all about that sorry, later, Paul. With lead. <laughs> we had an um, interesting start to the program. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> my apologies for that. I don't know. Good fun. He's, I he's, wasn't expecting that. He's very, he's, he's, he's a bit of a megalomaniac. Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. He's very enthusiastic. Yeah, he's hard to control. Um, and I have multiple personalities. So, um, for me, I like, I, I'm looking at things from an overview. So numeracy right. is just an example of right. one of the nine essential skills that, you know, if you are interested and love the, the area that you're going into, yes. if you're looking, my encouragement for young people is like, like play, discover what you love, right. find out right. that. Right. Right. Because when you're doing something that you love, you your never... brain looks differently at the things that you would in school be struggling with. Right. Like if I'm having, if I'm sitting in like doing a math, uh, a math test yes. in school. And I'm like, what is the point of this? I'm going to be like, I would I, rather yeah. have shards of glass in my eye or, than do or this Or a root test. canal. Or a root canal. <laughs> yeah. But if that math, like you're talking about, 
like you know, I, I, went, I, was at, I was out in British Columbia and I was doing some sharpshooting, yeah. some long distance yes. shooting. Yes. That math, I would have been like, I'm all over this. Yeah. Do you understand uh, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's tangible math. Because it's so tangible. It has. There's a, a yeah. there's a point to it. There's so there's something it. about there is. Uh, so there's something about making the skills relevant yes. and kids understanding that this isn't just to pass the test you're doing this. This is because you could use it doing sharpshooting or you could do it building right. a deck or whatever and then sort of giving. That's where most kids get upset. Like my 15-year-old yes, yes. daughter right now is like, I don't see the relevance of anything ever, right? And so, oh, yes. that's not, and I remember being there. I remember yeah. being in that place going, I don't understand. I don't see how this is going to apply to my life. Right. But that's the most amazing thing about the trades. Like people have to change their mindset because pre-industrial revolution, like, the, like 150 yeah. some odd years ago, if you were a tradesperson that worked with your hands, if you were a bricklayer, if you yes. were a stonemason, yes. if you were a carpenter, that was just as prestigious as being a sure doctor was. or a lawyer. It sure was. It was like you were, you, I mean, people would throw rose petals down at your feet as you walked by. I don't know if this part's exactly true, but in my mind, that's right. what it looked like. We'll go, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> but in effect, they did. Oh they my God, if the respect. baker ran yeah. out of bread, eh? Oh, you're in trouble. Right. But the, when right. the Industrial Revolution right. came in, yeah. and all of a sudden, suddenly the concept of being someone that worked with your hands became somebody that's stamping license plates or putting caps on toothpaste bottles. Right. That's where that stigma entered in. Right. And that's what's changing right now, is right. that the age of the artisan is coming back. Yes. And so, you know, the three of us are sitting here as artisans. Like, yes. like the amount of, it's just creativity in a field that has right. just not been seen that way, where, you know, basically we're all artists. Right. Yeah. And all those kids down there on the floor are all artists waiting to this, either having discovered their art right. or, or just looking, about to. Yeah. Well, that's another thing, because some of you have been in multiple trades. And one of the questions I wanted to ask was, Kate, in your case, how did you decide which one? <laughs> <laughs> and, and she does it, everything. And is it a journey? Well, exactly. I think it's important for young people to understand that you might make a decision at 22, yeah. but by 35 you may be doing something Very completely important. different sort of thing. And that yeah. you, so maybe you could comment a little on that. I think it's important to just be real with yourself and allow yourself to try things and put yourself out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And you might not end up doing that as a career forever yes. and embrace it. And accept that if you don't feel like it's the right fit and you haven't found your passion, maybe it's another trade or right, maybe it's another right. uh, another job, another career. Yes, yes. And for me, I was coming out of the course thinking, well, how do I, I love everything. Like, how do I really well, narrow this yeah, down? Yeah, exactly. So I ended up going into <laughs> renovations because you kind of have to do a little bit of everything. And yes, it, yeah. it's a, a kind of a, a mix of all of the trades that I really liked and appreciated. And I thought it would narrow down from there, but for me, it's kind of stayed broad where I, I love carpentry, so that's kind of the main yes. thing for me, but it also allows me to kind of pick and choose what kind of trades I, I want to kind of dabble in. And obviously, some have to be more qualified and licensed, right. which you bring <coughs> right. in when you need, but yes. it's kind of almost just that, like keeping it fresh and it's always, every day is a new challenge. And nice. uh, so I don't think, you don't have to be bogged down by feeling like you need to find your career and right away. pick that, that career choice right away. Got she, it. she got married a year ago yes. and, has been, and, has, and decided for the first year of marriage, her and her husband Dave are, are gonna, are, have been renovating a 150 year old farmhouse hmm. from the ground up. She might as well have built a whole new house. Like it's crazy. Uh, from the ground up by, her, by themselves yes. with Kate, like she's the one running the show. And there is every facet of the trades in this 150-year-old like, building that, that she is now like getting down the final stretch. Dave's at home now <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a timeline because if, if Kate comes back and like, you know, it's, stuff's not done, it's, it's trouble. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's, that's what's exciting about it. It's yeah. adventurous though. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the part that gets lost right. with people with the trades. And I wanna, cause I wanna hear more yeah. from you because you've yeah. got like, you're-, you're Multiple you're, trades. You're just like, Multiple like what, what, skills. Don't, what don't you do, number one? Is there anything you don't do? Maybe you could share with us a little bit. Time travel. I know I've heard, travel? I know I've heard, but you have been in multiple profession, multiple trades, multiple skills. Can you share with well, our like audience Paul a little bit? Well, like Paul was saying, like when you get bored, when you're not excited anymore, no. it's like, uh. oh, yeah. So I'm the that type, it's happen. like, I try, been there, done that, drank the Kool-Aid, did it well, and let's try something different. And do something else. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. Yeah, there's no. absolute, and I think with people in general, like they think, like people think I'm different and weird, okay, which I, I am. I get that all the time. Well, but the thing is, is that successful person people that. people are afraid of failure. That's, That's right. why they, they don't yes. want to try, try different things. Mm -hmm. 
But I have been in so many different trades, like I, uh, military, uh, like sharpshooter, but that's uh, artillery, oh, yes, right. infantry uh, so far, <laughs> but the day's not done yet. Uh, border services officer. Uh, then I went and took my uh, hairdressing course. I'm a licensed hairdresser. Licensed hairdresser, yes. And then I went back to sharpshooter to hairdresser. And I love then, this. I love this. And probably it's many the way audience. my brain works, it's wonderful, like, wonderful and I competed as a hairstylist, and I won my competitions. I competed as a sharpshooter, and I'm very competitive, and yes. I won my shooting competitions. Right. So I like, I'm one of these people that I, if I do something, I'm gonna do it a hundred percent, or I'm not gonna do it at all. And if Brilliant. I love it, I'm Brilliant. right in there. Brilliant. And after that, I went back to school uh, at 33. And uh, a year ago, a year ago, yeah. a year ago, I went back to school at 33 uh, to community college and I took marketing, business administration oh, yeah. and information technology. So now I'm working as a computer specialist. So I design websites and oh, whatnot yes. and yeah. I, I develop programs for the federal government. Me, but during the whole duration of this, yes. I've loved cooking. So my stress release at home, uh, yes. since I've been a kid, was cooking. If I was stressed out or upset or whatever, I'd come home and I'd cook. I never thought that my cooking was a skill. I just uh, thought it was a passion for me and yes. I'm self-taught. Like I, I don't have any classes, courses or anything else. And you know, I competed against over 10,000 people and ended up like, Top female home cook in Canada, Master Chef. Like, who would have known that? Right, 20 right. Years and ago? if you hadn't tried, you'd never know. Exactly. And people are like, why are you gonna go try on Master Chef? You're never gonna like make it. You're from Edmonston. You're from a small. And people, it's the people that try to yeah. like Put you stay down. away oh, I know. from I know those. you be like, stay away. Stay <laughs> away from these people. Or you can't do that because you're a girl. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> and it's like you just yeah. stay away from the negative people, surround yourself with positive yeah. people, and you know, don't be afraid to try. Look at me, 47, and like, I'm ma I'm chefing now. Like I'm doing all these chef gigs. I never There's knew. There's an important factor here. Go ahead. That Go for coming it. from coming from the place of representing representing the men. I think. Yes. <laughs> two, as a matter of fact, today. Yes, two men today. <laughs> two men today. Oh, man. Two men. Uh, well, there's start. one man, the other one, uh, I don't know what I'd call <laughs> them, but, right. you know. The jury's out on <laughs> yeah. Exactly. One and a half. But as a, as a father of four daughters, okay, this is an important factor yeah. for me. I grew up with my, with my mom and my sisters. I, grew, I, had, I now have four daughters. I have a, a male cat who's a moron. <laughs> It's been like, he, he basically, he thinks he's cross-eyed, he thinks he's a dog, and after six years, he's yet to understand the concept of a cat. Leader. That's my male companionship. So I have so many boys around me and young men who are, you, you know, who are working in my company. Oh, yes. It, but the problem mm -hmm. is, is that my daughters will, it's not a question I want them to, they will grow up in a country where they are viewed to be able to do anything the boys yes. can do, yes. but the greatest mindset stop the, the, the biggest problem to stop that from happening is their own minds what yeah. they believe what the stigmas are that exist yes. before them yes and and whether or not they're going to let other women tear them down because actually I, you know taking these two into account you know there's there are men that back you and there will be always little boys that are trying mm. to stop women from entering into the trades yes and you know what uh, you're gonna you're gonna have an easier time overcoming them than you are if you're not aware of the fact that it's the need for women to be fighting for each other and bonding yeah. together so that so that they they have each other's backs yep. because we if we don't have if we don't have like the other 50% of the population yeah. rising up yeah. to to help us with what is a, a, a trade crisis in Canada yes it, it is and that's We're the future trouble. that's the We're future of the economy well actually that was the last question i wanted to ask was advice to young people today given what you're observing about what's changing in the workplace yeah. and these nine essential skills what if i uh, sort of last comment from each of you oh, yeah. what is the advice that you would give to a young person or people who are working with young people and trying to inspire them the way the three of you have inspired us today. What are the kinds of things you'd say? Kate? Uh, <laughs> where do you start? Where do you start? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yes. a yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, don't be afraid to just jump in. And if you're passionate about something, no matter what anyone says, yeah. you, you'll be successful and you'll be uh, defined successful. You'll be successful in you found, you've found your passion yes. and you found self-satisfaction. 
That's and true. it doesn't matter what anyone else says yes. because really ultimately it comes down to how you feel yes. and it took me a long time to get there because yes. it's so easy to let other people's opinions creep into yes. your head Every day for and all influence of us, yeah. what you yeah. do but I think it's yeah. really important as parents and as teachers and as guidance counselors to encourage someone to just, no matter what it is, no matter if it's university, if they want to go, or skilled trade, or if they want to be an astronaut, encourage them fully to just go and try it. Try and it. make, put themselves out there and make mistakes. And, Fall and, pace. and yeah, and I've made hundreds of mistakes, but I've learned the most from my mistakes and I'm stronger and I have thicker skin because of it. And I can speak passionately about finding my passion because I've been through the, the trenches and yeah. I've gone, I've learned from my experiences. Have you, were you there with me? No! <laughs> 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 Lenny, Some of them actually seem pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Regardless of whether it was real books. Yeah. And Lynn, in your case, you found similarly, you feel similarly about encouraging your passion and then trying different things. I, my favorite saying, and I use it all the time, yes. is real women empower other women. They do no not problem. bring other women down. Sure. And the biggest threat is not males trying to stop us from entering trades. It's other women yes. that are intimidated by women that do do trades. I love that I said that No, no, but it's true. And I have daughters as well. And my daughters were brought up that yes. whatever they wanted to do, yes. didn't matter what anybody thought, that yes. they could be anything they wanted to be. So for everybody out there, you can be whatever you want to be. If the first thing you try, it's not your groove, mm -hmm. try something so else mm -hmm. and try something else. I've been trying different things for many years. I've never been on welfare <laughs> and I consider myself uh, quite successful. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm doing you're, you're okay. Today. I'm doing you're okay for myself. So there's nothing yeah. wrong with, you know, trying something different. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Paul. I think it's one of the biggest dangers is, is kind of, understanding what success actually is okay? yes because you know it, it is an actual easier thing i find for women to actually be able to say hey you know what i i failed and i screwed up with that it's guys that have a harder time with that guys seem to have a harder time with this failure thing oh they don't that, yeah that's yeah, the ego well. that's your ego because it ties it's into the naked male, male, male ego yeah I, like i'm writing a book right now uh, about men in our culture and how men have never been more confused yes and it's, it's called yes. it's called i don't want to be an adult anymore and it's, it's about kind of entering back into rediscovering not childishness, yes. but childlikeness. Yes. And it, it almost seems like women have an easier time being able to kind of adapt there, but, but unless they're picking up the slack from the guys who are just like, I'm so afraid of failure and you have to do everything now for me because I'm in a corner in a fetal position sucking it on a suit. Yes. So redefining Very what important. success is. Yes. You know, it's a funny thing I will say to people, when you think about what's going to be on your epitaph, you know, it's a bit dark, I know, yeah. but go with me on this. <laughs> when you're thinking about what's going to be on your gravestone at yes. the end of your life, marking your life, and if I'm talking to five people or 5,000 people, yes. the answer is always the same. Do you want it to say how much money you made or, you know, how, how important you were or how respected you were? Everyone would be like, no, no, shallow, shallow, terrible. I wouldn't want yeah. my life to be defined that way. I'd be like, okay, well, what would you want your life defined as? Well, I want, I want people to, to, to look at me and say, there's someone that, that followed their dreams, that made sure that they were passionate about what they were doing, that loved well and were loved in return, they invested in the, the relationships that were important in their life, that's, there's a life, there's your epitaph. And I'm like, okay, everyone agrees, everyone, people are like, yes, that's what we want. I'm like, well then, isn't it funny then, if you're statistical, that you'll spend five, maybe 10% of your time investing in the very thing you want written on your epitaph and 90 to 95% of your time investing in the very thing that you know is going to be shallow at the end of the day. Yeah. So redefining success based on money, yes. based on possessions, based on how big your house is and based on people looking at you and going, I respect you is meaningless. It's are you loving what you do and inspiring other people to find what they love to do? Now you're talking about a life that Scott is measured by a success because it's affecting other people. The, the, if I can share this, um, uh. the biggest compliment I've ever gotten and f from youth, well, 
Use. Well, I use. use. Sorry, I'm French. No, but you commence to parler français. He's kidding you. Yeah. <laughs> I thought my English communication skills were on point. By all means, that's continue. That's no. Is that when somebody tells me, when a little girl or a woman tells me, Lynn, you're inspiring. Mm -hmm. You're a it's renaissance. Right. You're a renaissance woman. Yeah. That means that I'm successful. That's right. Because that's what I. That's There's what I want to achieve. For me, that is success. That mm -hmm. for me, Listen. that's. Listen, all three of you, thank you very much. I'm sure our, our audience right across Canada feels very inspired. This is the kind of there life that you can live in. <laughs> Forgot to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very inspiring. Shot, Each of you is clearly really happy with the choices that you've made and the fact that you're continuing to make choices at this stage of your lives and, and you haven't fun. finished and, and having fun never too and inspiring old. others. Never thank too you old. so much and we'll see you on the competition floor. Thanks for spending time with us today, each of you. Thanks and we'll see you again us. downstairs and we'll continue the conversation down there about all the nine essential skills I know in many different ways. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye. I didn't even know you were there. <laughs>